recommendations to improve shock wave lithotripsy outcomes. Training by certified technicians and urologists should be mandatory before using any lithotripter. Well-defined protocols for extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy help to guarantee good results. The first step before starting treatment is alignment between the shock wave generator and the imaging system. This is performed by two projections of the fluoroscopy system, while a pointer is placed at the focus. Bad system alignment can result in poor fragmentation outcomes and tissue injury. Proper performance of the shock wave generator should be verified as often as possible. Stone phantoms, placed in a water tank at the focus of the lithotripter are a good way to evaluate fragmentation efficiency. Most manufacturers provide special water tanks to perform these tests. Regular maintenance by the manufacturer of the equipment is also crucial. Some pressure measurements can be done by hospital staff. Nevertheless, experienced personnel are required to obtain detailed pressure profiles of the shock wave source, using up-to-date technology. Most lithotripters allow control over few parameters, like the number of shock waves, the voltage, and the rate of shock wave administration. An important issue is to realize that the focal zone definition depends on the maximum positive pressure and does not necessarily represent the volume of clinical efficiency. The treatment zone is defined as the volume where we can expect stone fragmentation. Furthermore, the size of the treatment zone varies depending on the design of the shock wave source and the focus in the vice. Damage to an artificial kidney stone exposed in vitro to shock waves generated using an electrohydraulic shock wave generator. Mineral image. An piezoelectric source. Ride image. Shows the difference. The piezoelectric system produced a small and deep crater, while the electrohydraulic device formed a shallow wide crater. Close monitoring during treatment is crucial. Fluoroscopy can identify both renal and ureter alkali. However, several stones are radioluscent or minimally radiopaque. Respiratory motion causes stone displacement of up to 50 mm. Electromagnetic or piezoelectric lithotripters have a greater probability of missing the stone during treatment. Precise patient positioning is essential to achieve good results. Another important recommendation is to use low shock wave rates. Fast treatments should be replaced by effective treatments. In vitro studies have revealed that stones break faster at slow shock wave rates. Here is presented a 120 shock rate per minute. Here is presented a 60 shock rate per minute. Increasing the frequency above 2 Hz reduces fragmentation efficiency because of cavitation nuclei near the calculus, attenuating incoming shock waves. The rate of shock wave administration also influences tissue injury. Increased hemorrhage and tubular damage was observed when shock waves were delivered at high rates. Sometimes patients are being overtreated because of bad shock wave coupling. Plenty of acoustic gel should be applied on the membrane, because a thin layer of air does not allow shock wave passage. Patient movement during treatment may spoil good shock wave coupling.
special care has to be taken when using lithotriptors with two shock wave sources, since, AI as shown here, AI coupling may be inadequate on one membrane. Topical petroleum jelly is recommended, because the viscosity of the jelly prevents formation of cavitation bubbles on the skin, reducing pain. Another important factor regarding patient positioning for ESWL is that passage of the complete shock wave cone should be assured. Our video shows that only a small part of the total energy produced by the shock wave source is coupled into this patient. In open bath lithotriptors, ultrasound scanners should not exert too much pressure on the patient, AOS skin, since this could result in a water-air interface. During lithotracy, pressure pulses must propagate through several centimeters of tissue, resulting in pressure damping. Poor outcome may be expected with patients having a skin to stone distance greater than 10 centimeters. In these cases, it is recommended to place the stone along the along the symmetry axis of the shock wave source. Energy along the axis of symmetry is high even a few centimeters away from the focus. Nevertheless, it is very important to remember that the pressure drops radically when moving away from the focus in a direction perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. The method to see the axis of symmetry is to place transparent acetate over the fluoroscopy screen and draw the axis of symmetry on it, by placing a pointer at the focus and another pointer a few centimeters along the axis of symmetry. The calibration tip can be manufactured for this purpose. This may have to be done at two or three angles of the C-arm. Treatment of obese patients is not recommended on piezoelectric lithotriptors, since their focal zone is very small. Since lithotriptors generate shock waves using different methods, parameters such as power, kilovolts, high, medium, or low, are not adequate for defining fragmentation power. A change in voltage produces variations in positive and negative pressure peaks in the rise time of the shock wave. This will affect stone fragmentation, however, fragmentation correlates better with acoustic energy than with the positive pressure. A gradual increase in lithotriptor output voltage is a good strategy, particularly with brittle calculi. For very resistant stones, higher energy is recommended from the beginning. Energy should be reduced once the stone has been broken. It is also important to remember that calculi confined in a small cavity are much more difficult to destroy, since less acoustic cavitation occurs. Creation of an expansion chamber surrounding the stone is desirable, since it will enhance cavitation and comminution by allowing fragments to separate. Good results will only be achieved with a well-trained team. This requires time and investment. First-class lithotriptors may result in inefficient and even dangerous devices in hands of inexperienced urologists or technicians. 